Oscars. And many of those law firms are politically connected and they all make big contributions. So this is how so the this machine is all pay to works. Play. This, is the machine. this is all pay to play. And, and, and this political system is self-perpetuating because they promote certain candidates, they raise funds for certain candidates. Is it any coincidence that these four, what we call the Burke Four, did not enter the race until after Rahm Emanuel dropped out? And then suddenly when they entered the race, they're already generating big campaign contributions. Tony Prequico has 2.8 million. 2 .8 Mendoza million. has 1.2 million. Bill Daly has 2.2 million. Chico, uh, no doubt. Well, Bill Daly raised, he's got 2.2 million in cash on hand, but he's raised 4 million. That, that's right, but okay. he's raised 4 million. And Gary Chico's uh, yeah, Gary raised? Gary Chico, 1.8 million. Okay. Yeah, so, so at the end of the day, I mean, this is the why, way why the system. So people give these people money, especially the business community, in Tony's case, it's SEIU and the, and and the Chicago the, Teachers Union yeah. will be coming forth. I mean, despite the fact... It, and it, the trial attorneys for Susan and Mendoza. Yeah. Think about so this. So it's unions yes. and corporations. That's right. It's unions who, and corporations. Who want to play and they got to pay. Exactly. So The one thing, just because you painted yourself as a reformer, yeah. some people might say, but wait a second, you got your start with Daily, weren't no, you? No, I the did. Well, you started in the state as a revenue yeah. guy? Yeah. Well, I got my start working for Phil Rock. And yeah. for 12 years, actually working directly for Don Clark Netsch, who okay. it was no one's machine candidate. But then you candidate. eventually did turn to work for Daly, didn't well, you? Weren't you the budget director for him? Well, the Daly, the Daly administration... Richard M. Daly? Let me finish. The Daly administration asked me to come, and, uh, come from Springfield and to revamp the scandal-ridden revenue department. Then when the city was in a financial crisis in the 90s, I was uh, I was asked to take over the budget office, which I did. Bounce three budgets. So weren't you working for cops. Daily? Well, I was working for the Daily Administration. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. What I mean. But that doesn't make me part of the Daily organization. That makes me an expert that they brought into the schools, to, that brought into the city to solve a problem. And then when the schools financially collapsed, or on the verge of financial collapse in 1995, when Daily got control uh, from right. the legislature. He, in 95. He, he asked me to be CEO of the Chicago Public Schools, and of course, and and let me point out. Uh, that um, I inherited a school district that didn't even have a, uh, an investment grade and uh, had a $1.4 billion structural deficit. But and wouldn't he put somebody Let me finish, there? let me finish. Okay. And had seen 115,000 a student decline in enrollment. And six years later, uh, the schools were a national model. We had almost a billion dollars in cash balances. We had 70,000 more students than they have today. And then I decided, when I decided to leave the school, I decided to challenge the machine. Did you, if all this stuff was going on, these conflicts that were bad, did you ever, in 95 to 2001, say, hey, hey, Chico, stop that. If you don't stop it, I'm going to do something about well, it. Well, first of all, let me respond because by... Because you guys were together, Well, no, 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 look, you know, let me respond by saying that, you know, uh, when people get contracts with the city, they will gravitate towards law firms that they think are politically connected. So Chico ambulance chasing companies who had got contracts either with the schools or with the city. You know, for example, he did the uh, he did the uh, the uh, bus, bus shelters with that French right. company. You know, that overbid well, the contract. Was he doing anything wrong? You know? And could you have done well, anything to stop it? Was he doing anything illegal? No. Well, unethical. Uh, unethical? Well, I think a lot of that stuff is unethical. So could you have done anything to stop no, it? No, no. I mean, there, there's no Not way you could. call them out. There, well, suffice to say, I can give you a laundry list of people that I terminated, okay. like Mickey Siegel or Tom Rosenberg's contracts, etc. So there's a whole long but list. But not Gary Chico. I mean, you do need no, to. No, 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 no. I'm look, just look, focusing look. on what that we're because people, about are, here people is, watching this are going to wonder. Right. If you were as close as people thought you and Gary running CPS, well, first of all, doing I, great things, as you did, and maybe he did too, to make the CPS better, couldn't you have brought, brought him in? Couldn't you have toned that down? Couldn't you have done anything? Because you couldn't do it to Mayor Daley. People understand that. You couldn't do it to Ed Burke. But Gary Chico? Well, you know, first of all, first of all Gary hustled his own business. You know, you know, I couldn't tell vendors, don't hire Gary Chico could or do don't hire Daley yeah, George. Yeah. So, no, I mean, you can't okay. do that. All okay. you could do, okay. all you could do is, first of all, make sure everything was competitively bid and make sure that contracts were awarded. Fair. I mean, it wasn't an accident that 50... 54% of all construction contracts were awarded to minority okay. women-owned businesses. Let me finish. You're watching Public Affairs. Berkowitz is my name and politics is our game. And we will be doing lots of politics and public policy this evening because we have as our guest Paul Vallis. He is one of 14 candidates running for mayor of the city of Chicago. Some would say there are only four, the Burke Four. Hey, Paul, who's the Burke Four? 
Well, the Burke Four are four individuals. Uh, they're really uh, part of the political machine, and they've been part of the, politi the political machine for decades. And they are all tied uh, to Alderman Ed Burke in, in a variety of ways, in many ways financial. And as you know, they're Tony Preckwinkle. So who are the Burke Four? Tony Preckwinkle, uh, the current county board president, who happens to be running for mayor. Uh, even though she just got reelected county board president, Susanna Mendoza, uh, the current comptroller, also just elected, who is also running for mayor. Of course, there's uh, Gary Chico, who incidentally uh, got his start in the finance committee and has the no notoriety of having abstained from voting on contracts that have come before uh, his desk as a board president at Chicago Public Schools more times than Ed Burke has abstained from uh, voting on contracts because of potential conflicts of interest. And then there's Bill Daly, and when people talk about the Daly uh, uh, connection, uh, you know, part of the reason that, um, that um, Mayor Daly was elected was because the Daly's cut a deal with Burke. Burke got the Finance Committee and was able to keep workmen's compensation in the Finance Committee. And, and so uh, the, the powerhouse that Burke, what did What did he give the Daly's that, for that? Well, support. When they ran. You mean for 89? When, when he, he ran, ran for mayor. mayor when he ran for deal? mayor for the first time. So that was the deal. So um, so they're all connected. Now, of course, uh, with the exception of Daly, who to his credit has not thrown Burke completely under the bus. Well, what is, what, what's the problem? Because somebody may be watching this and they don't know. They've heard that Ed Burke's been an alderman for, what, 50 years. He's 75. He's been head of the finance committee for a long time. Well, look, the problem is what what happened on January second. I think well, 2019, well, January second, 2019. That's right. Well, on January second, uh, he got indicted for in effect shaking down businesses. Technically, a criminal complaint was filed. A not criminal an indictment, complaint, not indictment. Not indictment. All okay. right. So let me qualify that by saying a criminal complaint. Tell us about that criminal sure. complaint. Well, you what, know, did, what did he do according to the feds? In effect, according to the feds, he was basically pressuring. Uh, you know, pressuring businesses to basically give business to his law firm uh, in exchange for basically, you know, getting their their zoning approved and all Who's the there? other who, things. Who is the entity? Need. Well, look, you know, it, it's not important. Well, it is important just to give people no, just a no, big flavor. No, you know, I'm not going to get into who the entity was and things like that, but, you know, because okay. I'm not, you know, because I haven't been focusing on the Burke indictment no, per okay, se okay. as much as I've been focusing on the fact that in Chicago there is a pay-to-play system. The political system is a pay-to-play system. Uh, let me give you an example. And okay. this involves the four. Uh, the, the Burke Four. Uh, uh, in, in Chicago, if you want to get your zoning approved, if you're a businessman or even a homeowner, you uh, unfortunately, you have to go to zoning lawyers, uh, many of whom are often <clears throat> politically connected. Uh, in fact, Daily George, uh, if you remember, years ago, was one of the big zoning providers. And, um, and so, that was the Daily of the Daily uh, fame. So you have to pay. So you have to pay to hire uh, uh, law firms that have expertise in zoning so that you can get your uh, your zoning approved. Uh, if you want to appeal your property taxes, you all too often have to go to politically connected law firms. You know, the Burke law, Burke has been in the property tax appeals business. Madigan has been in the property tax appeals business. Uh, if, you, uh, if you want to lobby for city contracts, you hire politically connected law firms like, uh, you know, like Chico. I mean, look, Chico abstained from voting 500 times when he was president of the Chicago Public Schools because what he was doing was he was hustling contractors who had gotten businesses and contracts through the school board for, for legal business. So th this is the pay-to-play culture. Look, uh, you know, look at the lawsuit settlements that we've seen with respect to lawsuits filed against police and city in general. The city has paid a billion dollars. The city has paid a billion dollars in in settlements uh, uh, on lawsuits over the last ten years. But what's not included For in that? Police malfeasance. Not only police. It's the police. It's everything. Broader than okay. Maybe yeah. about sixty percent is police. Forty percent okay. is the rest of the city. Okay. So there's a cottage industry on suing the city. Well, guess what? The city has also paid out something like two hundred and thirty million dollars, not to law firms that sued the city, but to law firms that the city hired to settle the lawsuits. And many of those law firms are politically connected and they all make big contributions. So this is how so the this machine is all pay to works. Play. This, is the machine. this is all pay to play. And, and, and this political system is self-perpetuating because they promote certain candidates, they raise funds for certain candidates. 
Is it any coincidence that these four, what we call the Burke Four, did not enter the race until after Rahm Emanuel dropped out? And then suddenly when they entered the race, they're already generating big campaign contributions. Tony Perkwinkle has 2.8 million. 2.8 million. Mendoza has 1.2 million. Bill Daly has 2.2 million. Chico, uh, no doubt. Well, Colleen, Bill Daly raised, he's got 2.2 million in cash on hand, but he's raised 4 million. That, that's right, but okay. he's raised 4 million. And Gary Chico's uh, yeah, Gary raised? Yeah, Gary Chico, 1.8 million. Okay. Yeah, so, so at the end of the day, I mean, this is the why, way why the do, system. So people give these people money, especially the business community, in Tony's case, it's SEIU and the, and and the, the Chicago the, Teachers Union yeah. will be coming forth. I mean, despite the fact that it, And the trial attorneys for Susanna Mendoza. Yeah. Think about so this. So it's unions yes. and corporations. That's right. It's unions who, and corporations. Who want to play and they got to pay. Exactly. So they understand that. So so in the really, really independent candidates and really reformed candidates are left on the sidelines because it really becomes all about money. And look, you know, I can't... Who are the reform candidates in this race? Well, I'm the reform candidate. You know, 10 years ago, uh, uh, this, I think this month, I think it was, or maybe it was last month, Rod Bogorovich got indicted. Right. Now, if you remember, right. yeah. a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, I challenged Rod Bogorovich. That was 2002 in the That's Democratic right. primary for governor. Right? I left... I left the Chicago Public Schools because clearly... Were you fired by Bayer Daly? No, 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 no. Richard M. Daly no, didn't fire you? No, I, no, I resigned. You left, you resigned. Yeah, yeah I, I resigned. Daly you, couldn't have forced me out of the school. Were you on good terms with him? Then? Well, you know, I think, I think they wanted me out for three reasons. One is I pulled all the school construction programs out of the Public Building Commission so I could bid them competitively so that I could do minority and women-owned business uh, 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 contracting. And so that so I could, they didn't like that because they couldn't let me do finish. Play play. Let me finish. So yeah. I, and so that I could make sure that um, you know that blacks and Latinos and had an opportunity to uh, you know participate in these construction jobs. And I did. I exceeded. I actually fifty eight percent of all the, the contracts, okay. uh, the contract dollars went to black and Latinos. But let me point out that that was a problem because they wanted to bring those projects back in because they had their pet contractors who they would always award those contracts to. A second reason was. Uh, they wanted to close schools. They wanted to, if you remember, three years after I left, they did Renaissance 2010, a plan to go in and close a hundred allegedly unperforming neighborhood schools and turn them over and convert them over to charters. And, and, and by doing that, they totally decimated, decimated neighborhoods. And the third reason I was forced out was because I was pretty popular. And, and I think they saw me as a threat. But this is the point that I want to make. I challenged the Democratic Party, and I ran in the primary. And as you know, I got outspent 14 to 1. And but were, wouldn't you be And the, none, none of the Burke Four supported me. In fact, Gary Chico supported Preckwickle. So Wait a uh, second, wait a second. Yeah. Ray, hey, Gary Chico, were, they didn't support you in the primary. Yeah. Preckwickle wasn't I, I, no, the, I'm sorry, not Preckwickle. He supported uh, Blagojevich. He supported Blagojevich. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, so the... The one thing, just because you've painted yourself as a reformer, yeah. some people might say, but wait a second, you got your start with Daly, weren't no, you? No, I the did. Well, you started in the state as a revenue yeah. guy? Yeah, well, I got my start working for Phil Rock, and yeah. for 12 years actually working directly for Don Clark Netsch, who okay. it was no one's machine candidate. But then you candidate. eventually did turn to work for Daly, didn't well, you? Weren't you the budget director for him? Well, the Daly, the Daly administration... Richard M. Daly? Let me finish. The Daly administration asked me to come and... Uh, come from Springfield and to revamp the scandal-ridden revenue department. Then when the city was in a financial crisis in the 90s, I was, uh, I was asked to take over the budget office, which I did, bounce three budgets, so record number of cops. Daily? Well, I was working for the daily administration. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. What I mean. But that doesn't make me part of the daily organization. That makes me an expert that they brought into the schools, to, that brought into the city to solve a problem. And then when the schools financially collapsed or on the verge of financial collapse in 1995. And Daly got control uh, of right. the legislature he, in 95. He, he asked me to be CEO of the Chicago Public Schools. And of course, and, and let me point out uh, that um, I inherited a school district that didn't even have a, uh, an investment grade and uh, had a $1.4 billion structural deficit. But wouldn't and he put Let me finish. There? Let me finish. Okay. Okay. And had seen 115,000 student decline in enrollment. And six years later, uh, the schools were a national model. We had almost a billion dollars in cash balances. We had 70,000 more students than they have today. And then I decided, when I decided to leave the school, I decided to challenge the machine. But what's really important is what happened the machine. after I left, which is the Democratic machine. 
and I ran as a how reform did you candidate. How did you challenge the By Democrat? challenging Rob Bogoyevich, by entering the Did you know primary. that Rod was going to be running? Oh, yeah, 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 I knew Rod. Did, that did, they were gonna did have Roland some, Burris come in later, or was that to hurt you? Roland Burris came in later, and Roland Burris, well, you know, I'll let Roland explain where he got his money from. Okay. You know, there are pundits who say he was brought in to neutralize my support in the black community. But let me point out that when I Can left Chicago. Can I just ask Chicago, you one thing before yeah, you go on? Yeah. Because some people would say, for Daly to put you there as head of CPS in 95, to give you that kind of freedom, that kind of responsibility, he must have trusted you. He must have thought you were one of the guys. Maybe he thought no. you were a good fellow. No, no. Say, look, know? look. You know, let me tell you what happened in 1995. You don't think you got any of that? Okay. Let me respond. Okay. In, in 1995, the, the schools had had eight work stoppages in 15 years. They had a $1.4 billion projected five-year structural deficit. They didn't have an investment grade, so they couldn't issue bonds for school construction. They had had uh, union strifes. Uh, and they had had... They had big problems. They had, and they had lost 115,000 students over a period of 15 years. I was sent to the school. Some say I was moved out of the budget office because I was stirring up a hornet's nest, you know, looking at things like uh, criticizing the Blueback program or doing internal audits and things like that. But I believe he sent me over because I, he felt I could negotiate a collective bargaining agreement and bring labor peace, which I did, and because I could balance the budget, which I did. I don't think they ever thought that the schools would become such a positive for the mayor. Uh, uh, in, but they must you know, have been glad about yeah. that. Well, he so was in that so glad. sense, you and but Daly then I got were too in big sync. For my, yeah, but then and, I got, but you too, got too big for your britches. I got too big for my britches. They they wanted some of that control. Right, because back. let me tell you what okay. what machine candidates don't do, or people who are part of the pay to play culture don't do. They don't uh, challenge the organization, and then when they lose, they don't go to Philadelphia and do s similar reforms, balance the budget, improve test scores, build new schools. They don't go to New Orleans after. Uh, one of the most devastating natural disasters, Katrina, and rebuild an entire school system. They don't go Is to that hate. rebuilt with a lot of school choice? Well, 100% school choice because so it's all. It's, do people now criticize you and say, you're still for school choice, you're still for charter schools? Well, my position is. Is that true? Are yeah, you, well, where are you on school all right, choice? All right, so let me explain. My, my position has, has been not to oppose measures that expand educational opportunities for poor children, period. So I have, all, you know, I have always supported opportunities to give poor children uh, the type of educational choices that are, uh, have normally have been limited to the effluent. But, but to finish my point uh, about New Orleans, okay. you know, after I was done with New Orleans, and incidentally, there's not a failing school in New Orleans, and there's not a child in a, either a new, brand new school or a school that's been completely renovated. After New Orleans, after the devastating earthquake killed a quarter million people in Haiti, I went to Haiti. I've been to Haiti 40 to 50 times. I'm still involved in Haiti. I went to Chile after the devastating earthquake. I spent time at the Justice Department working on prison reform. So the point is, you know, people who are part of the pay-to-play culture don't do those type of things. So, uh, you so know, now, I've always been a maverick in terms of my willingness to take on the establishment. So now at 64, for the you want to take 65. on? 65. 65. Happy birthday. Yeah. So now at 65, <laughs> you think you can turn around the city of Chicago? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Is that what it needs to be? Yeah. Well, you know, I think that absolutely. I, I think I'm the one candidate who can come in uh, and balance the budget, address the issue of the unfunded pension liability, bring revenues, at, spending in line with revenues, and construct a budget that, could, that can invest in the community that can lead to the type of community investment, public safety, education, economic development, infrastructural repair that will make every neighborhood, every community attractive. Because the city is declining. The city's lost 17% of its wealth What's measured the population by now? property value. And the city has lost 5% of its population. So yeah. among the major cities, uh, we've lost We've lost the most, uh, the so most number, number three, of heading, residents. Heading for number four. Yeah, are we number four or heading for mm. number five? Okay. But, but the point is the city's in decline. So I feel that I'm best equipped to, in effect, lay out a financial plan that will address the underlying financial issues while prioritizing the budget so that we're investing in the community <clears throat> because that's what I've done in the past. And I also think, as demonstrated by my entire career, that I'm a person who can stand up uh, to the political establishment, and will and and the person who can op, who can in effect end, if not obliterate, this pay-to-play culture. So we skipped over one thing. We'll mm -hmm. come back right to where you are, but you mentioned this pay-to-play thing. You never mentioned the word alderman's privilege. 
Is that tied in with pay to Absolutely. play? Absolutely. So would you abolish and could you abolish as mayor the alderman's privilege? What is the alderman's privilege and what would you do about it? Let me tell you what you can do because what aldermen do is they have veto power over so many things. You want to open a business, you want to get zoning, they can veto that. You know, a homeowner, you want to build, a, you know, you want to convert unimproved property, uh, unimproved space to a garden unit, they can veto that. I mean, just, the, to, just to make, bring it home to people. You want to get Bur a liquor license, but the, they the can Burke block that. The thing was this guy from Burger King, 100 restaurants, right. for one he's remodeling, he's trying to get the remodeling in there. He needs, he's told he needs, he needs a permit. And he's he needs a permit for the driveway, for this and that. And Burke's holding it up. And Burke says, here, I've taken care of this. Where's the legal business? Right. I okay. want the legal business. So, And what's point, amazing is he said he can it on do my it. phone. He can do it. Some would say he's not really doing it as his power as chairman of the finance committee. It's simply as an alderman yeah. who can hold it up with the, with the aldermanic privilege. I believe that aldermen do that through aldermanic privilege. They just don't do it on cell phones. <laughs> you know, they don't. That was kind of the dumb thing. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, that was If you hubris. were talking to Ed, you might say, Ed, what are you thinking? Okay. Well, they used if to you're going to do a shakedown, right. don't do it. On, be, I guess the, he thought he would, nobody would ever wiretap that's him, right. just like because, Rod thought nobody right. would wiretap exactly. him. Exactly, exactly. People because, with that kind of power. Right, they because think these guys, these guys were, you know, these things happen all the time. People are just a little more subtle about it. I mean, you know, when Gary Chico abstains from voting 500 times because he's hustling contractors for business, well, what do you think? They go to Chico because they think, well, he's a made guy. He's part of the organization. You know, I, I, so the point is, you know, I mean, there are, you know, there are indiv individuals who have been doing the same thing. They're just more subtle no, but wait about Wait a second. It. At that time, 95 to 2001, you were known as Mr. Inside. You were the CPS CEO. Chico was known as Mr. Outside. Just the other day at one of the forums, Chico looks down and he says, who would you ever run with? Who would you pick if you had to pick somebody? Right. He said that bald guy at the end of the table. Yeah. Paul, you're not completely bald, but no. he was he was referring to you. Right. And my Chico was giving you a compliment. Yeah, well, and of so course. So didn't he, the right, point so is, me, did you, if all this stuff was going on, these conflicts that were bad, did you ever in 95 to 2001 say, hey, hey, Chico, stop that. If you don't stop it, I'm going to do something about well, it. Well, first of all, let me respond Because by, you guys were together, Well, no, thought. no, no. Look, you know, let me respond by saying that, you know, uh, when people get contracts with the city, they will gravitate towards law firms that they think are politically connected. So Chico ambulance chasing companies who had got contracts either with the schools or with the city. You know, for example, he did the uh, he did the uh, the uh, bus, bus shelters with that French company. You know, that overbid well, the contract. Was he doing anything wrong? You know? And could you have done well, anything to stop it? Was he doing anything illegal? No. Well, unethical. Uh, unethical? Well, I think a lot of that stuff is unethical. So could you have done anything to stop No, it? no. I mean, there, there's no I way you can call them out. There, well, suffice to say, I can give you a laundry list of people that I terminated, okay. like Mickey Siegel or Tom Rosenberg's contracts, etc. So there's a whole long list. But not list. Gary Chico. I mean, you do need no, to... No, 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 no. I'm look, just look, focusing look, on that because about people, here are, is, people watching this are going to wonder... Right. If you were as close as people thought you and Gary running CPS, well, first of all, doing I, great things, as you did, and maybe he did too, to make the CPS better, couldn't you have brought, brought him in? Couldn't you have toned that down? Couldn't you have done anything? Because you couldn't do it to Mayor Daley. People understand that. You couldn't do it to Ed Burke. But Gary Chico? Well, you know, first of all, first of all Gary hustled his own business. You know, you know. I couldn't tell vendors, don't hire Gary Chico couldn't or do don't hire Daley yeah, and George. Yeah. So no, I mean, you can't okay. do that. All okay. you could do, okay. all you could do is, first of all, make sure everything was competitively bid and make sure that contracts were awarded. Fair. I mean, it wasn't an accident that 54% of all construction contracts were awarded to minority okay. women-owned businesses. Let me finish. And if 58% of those workers hired were African-American and Latinos, it's not like they were running out there you know, uh, uh, giving business to Gary Chico. So the point is, this is the point. In, in Chicago, businesses almost automatically gravitate toward these made law firms, property tax appeals, lobbying, etc. I mean, I can go through a laundry list of people that I jettisoned, some of whom ended up going to jail uh, because they violated the rules or they tried okay. to circumvent the process. But, you know, Burke's ability, uh, Chico's ability. It's going to be bad TV. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. But my point is that's, that's you know, the bottom line is, is you know, in order to change the pay-to-play culture, okay. you need a mayor who's basically going to say enough. First of all. Is that what has to happen now? Well, you need to establish specific rules and regulations that say if you're on boards, you can't have conflicts of interest, number okay. one. You know, just. What about outside no, income? Well, uh, 
Let me I'll finish. See. Okay. Uh, we got to move this along. All right, because we gotta get all to right the but issues. let me finish really okay. quickly. If you okay. don't interrupt me, I can move it a lot faster. And so what I'm saying is if you're on the board, you can't have business. And, you know, simply saying that I'm abstaining some, from voting and that somehow frees me of any potential conflict of interest is not enough. If you're going to serve on a board, you can't have any clients who are getting contracts through that organization, even if they're after the clients have already okay. gotten the contracts, number one. Number two, that if you're an alderman or older woman, you are not able to earn additional outside income or you basically can't have family members on the payroll. Can you do that as mayor? Yeah. Well, I think or do you, you have to get the city council to vote for you that? You would have to get the city council to vote for it. But let me tell you what you can do as mayor. Okay. First of all, you can push for term limits for the mayor. Because the ultimate uh, pay-to-play, uh, uh, you know, prevention is term limits. Uh, obviously, getting term limits for the city council is a greater challenge. But I'll tell you what the mayor can do unilaterally is the mayor can rotate committee assignments so that you don't have okay. uh, you don't Entrenched have somebody power, yeah. you don't have somebody on the finance committee for two, three, four decades. In other words, you term limit them to four years. Because if you do that, if you have rotating committee assignments, which the mayor can do just okay. unilaterally, can you get and, this? and, 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 okay. you, you pass a city council ethics that okay. say no conflicts. Can you get the city you council to terminate uh, aldermanic privilege? Well, the, the mayor can terminate aldermanic privilege. He can do privilege. that. Yes. Okay. And you would do that. Yes. Because me, that's something you can I do. I know you want to get one last thing before we leave Laquan McDonald. Could that have been avoided? Does McCarthy get some of the blame? Does somebody else get the blame? Because look what happened. Looking at the video, a policeman, the seventh or eighth policeman to roll up, the first six roll up, they call for tasers, they don't get a taser, That's right. they wait. All right, so let me speak. So Van Dyke rolls up, right. and he's now convicted. He, bam, 16 times right. and six A guy's holding a pen knife and scratching cars. Is it a training issue? Should we be psychologically going through each policeman looking for an early detection thing? Should we have had more tasers? You got a minute. Well, you know, let me respond. What's the lesson of Laquan McDonald? Let me respond by saying the night, the night Laquan McDonald was killed, the cops were on the scene, many of whom did not view him as a threat before Van Dyke showed up and were keeping their distance, were calling for a taser. And in the entire Chicago police force, there were 500 tasers. By contrast, because McCarthy always talks about how he's, he's bringing the lessons of New York to Chicago, New, New York had 15 so McCarthy has tasers. to answer for that. Have you ever well, asked he, him that at a no, forum? No, no. It's not he, your job? No. Well, he, It's he, my he, job? Come on here, Gary, he, and explain. Look, it. look, you know, at the end of the day, one settlement, the avoidance of one settlement, one, one of the many $5 million plus settlements could have paid uh, for providing tasers for okay. every officer uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the police department. So it was sheer negligence. And look, the Laquan McDonald uh, 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 from the beginning was a cover-up, and it was a cover-up at the top. Both Emmanuel and McCarthy you mean and in terms others. of not releasing the absolutely, video or absolutely. the facts or anything. Absolutely. Is that continued to this day? Because we're taping this on January seventeenth and the judge released her 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 verdict for the three guys who were accused was it three guys yeah. who were policemen who were accused of filing false reports, et cetera. She found them. She acquitted them, right? Yes. She, it, it's, she, and I, I just that, heard that, that she did. Decision? I haven't. Was that a bad yeah, decision? Look, I trust in the courts. Just as I, uh, you know, just as I accepted the the you courts. Think, you, you trust? Let me finish. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. as I accepted the court's decision regarding Van, uh, Van Dyke, yeah. I've accepted the court's decision regarding these individuals. I want to look at the larger issue, and the larger issue is the cover-up that occurred at the top because it's important by it's by important by the mayor by the Rahm corporation Emanuel, council corporation Rahm Emanuel council. by McCarthy because at the end of the day that's where leadership comes okay. that that you set the tone Gary Rom corporation council come on the show and we're fair we're balanced you have another point of view come on the show and explain it okay public affairs very much thanks Residco, our sole corporate underwriter, for helping to make the production of this show possible.